bring on board with uh, Wing Nation, presented hey, by Hercules Tires, right on our just, strike. Yeah, just so you guys know, um, again, you, you were discussing the producer position and the quality of my work, and I didn't have the volume up on all that, so everybody missed it. Apologize. Sorry. Really? Yeah, you sorry. Are joking? Like no, this, I'm the not. The whole thing? Yeah, the whole thing. The whole, the whole diatribe there about how great I was. Do we just need to start over? We just need to start over now. We just need to keep going. No, just keep going. <laughs> just keep going. Okay. Uh, I'm not even sure what we heard, what you didn't hear. So We're it, a hot They didn't mess. hear anything until I said, hey, guess what? You weren't we'll on go. the air. We'll do like right. they do in the movies. Yeah. Yep. Take 26. Hello again. It is Wing Nation <laughs> presented by Hercules Tires right on our strength. Yeah. Does that work? Yeah, good. Yeah, we're good. Oh, we're good. Wait, are we good, Craig? Racing. Are we good, Craig? Uh, yeah, you, you, yeah, we're good now at this point. <laughs> He's new around here. Yeah. Give him a break. First He's day new. on the job. Exactly. Uh, presented by Hercules Tires right on our strike. Talking sprint car racing, our favorite time of the week when we're talking. Well, we're talking a lot when we're being heard. <laughs> and the volume and is the up. And the volume is up. That is hysterical. We <laughs> we had a moment. We had a moment. We'll just give you a little idea of what happened here because I don't know what all what all happened. Uh, we we really don't need where, to do that. We Steve. had a moment where we were busted on Craig and uh Oh, Craig forgot true. to turn the volume on us, uh, busting on him. So, uh, and uh, it is good. Gregor is our producer. He has done this show forever, and he always is great. And um, rare that we've actually until the day. moment. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it is great. Uh, we are so glad you joined us. Uh, we have a ball, that's for sure. We have a good time with it. And uh, today, James McFadden and Rico Abreu, two guys that had a pretty good weekend. Yeah, as great well. weekends. Great weekends, that's for sure. How are you? How are things? I'm good. Pretty good. How about you? Fantastic. Fantastic. Enjoying Great. the NASCAR media right now? No, not at all. <laughs> um, I will. Uh, resist. Can we just Sorry. Uh, maybe maybe I can get Craig to play back my uh, rant about social media from the last week or two? Yeah, exactly. Um, ay 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 ay. Yeah, let's not even. Folks, put down the phone and enjoy and real enjoy life. Enjoy life. That's. That is okay. Now I went about on a rant about it. Oh, okay. I have been sorry. What did I start? No, 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 Aaron. This has been spectacular because I have been like evenings. Like I started off with just helping myself sleep. Mm-hmm. Like turn the phone off a half hour before I go to bed. Yeah. Okay. And I've enjoyed that thirty-minute window so much, where it's like, why don't I turn the phone off like at seven or seven thirty? Mm-hmm. And I've done that a few times. Wow. Yeah. I mean, phenomenal. Sunday night, um, chilling out. Of course, the world's all blown up. The, the NASCAR world's all blown up Sunday night. And I literally uh, put Spotify on, shot everything else down, and sat on my back porch for like an hour and a half. Just listen. I have the, uh, a, a series of music called Back Porch Songs. Just, yeah. You know, John Prine, Jimmy Buffett, that sort of thing. Fun stuff that I love. And I sat there for an hour and a half. And it was just like, I'm just going to sit here for a little bit. And um, I sat there and I'm like, yeah, I'll go two more songs. Oh, I love that song. Oh, I'm going to go a while. Um, just phenomenal. I had a glass of wine. And so then I went in and the only thing I have on my phone is my sleep tracker, mm-hmm. uh, my work sleep tracker. So I had to go push the button on that. I'm like, walk in, turn off your Spotify, turn on your whoop, and don't touch it. Don't yeah. look at anything else. And I went to bed and it was probably the best night's sleep. So, folks... Put the phones down, except for when you're watching Wing Nation, of course, if you're watching on your phone. You got to check <laughs> And pick that. it up. Just pick kidding. It up. Yes, exactly. Uh, crazy times in the world. Um, a lot going on, though. A lot going on. Well, and then on the um, on the Pennsylvania side, on the sprint car side, Danny Dietrich is now marketing Cheater Wings. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Danny Dietrich's Cheater Wings. Exactly. Um, folks, sometimes people win races because they're good and their car is good. Mm-hmm. Once in a while, that happens. No, it happens a lot. Um, but then, well, in this all, this actually goes back. Ashley talks about it because at Port Royal, there apparently is a little wing technology being developed in Central Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. Um, probably the 48s involved with it. Danny is. You know the 69 Ks involved. Yeah. With that. And so apparently there were a lot of wing changes at Port Royal among World of Outlaw teams ah. trying to do something a little different. Yeah, now, now, my theory on this thing is, is that, is it a wing issue, or is there something they're doing on the underside of the race car, and they're deflecting with the wing, yeah. and that sort of thing, and it's just all, but the, the, the funny thing of it is, is just everyone's now, like, like the Danny Dietrich cheater, and of course, I know this may shock you, 
Danny's playing along with us. Well, yeah. Well, exactly. There's a big shocker. A wing with no decals. There you go. Yeah, a wing with no decals. And so Danny's playing along with us. And and actually, and actually, it's funny because this is the funny part of Twitter in that at times how serious people are about this. I mean, you know, if you're in the non-Danny Dietrich camp and you see him in victory lane with a non-painted wing, oh, the helicopter Uh. is fired up. And Dietrich's cheating, and he's been doing it his whole life, of course. Not just at Dinston, yes. It just didn't happen at Lincoln. You know, I mean, people, settle down. It's racing. We're supposed to be having fun here. I think Dietrich is having fun, though. Oh, he is. I think Danny, I think, I think, I think stirring that pot is part of the fun. Hey, uh, by the way, speaking of Danny, um, there is a great story in an area auto from about two weeks ago about um, Gary Kaufman. Wow. Um, forget uh, Kenny Shup, maybe? I forget who wrote the story. I, I, Area Auto Racing News boggles my mind because it's the racing trade paper that you don't get to the end of the week. Yeah. This is not supposed to work. And yet Lenny Sammons and his crew give Still, you stuff that yep. is just so relevant. But there is a great, great story on Gary Coffin. His background, his, his, uh, his Sandoz fruit market business, his philosophy, his mm. daughter, everything else. Phenomenal stuff. So really, really cool. I, I actually am glad I stumbled into the Danny Dietrich Twitter thing cheater so that wings. I can compliment yeah. uh, you know, the, the cheater wings <laughs> because it just struck me going down a rabbit hole. That story was phenomenal. I just read it over the weekend, and it was phenomenal. So uh, I've known Gary for quite some time, and I've, I've toured the shop, and Gary's been great to me, but it was really neat getting the whole story. Um, really, really cool stuff. So uh, Ariana Racing News, love that. That's for sure. Uh, let's get into our Hefner Racing Product Hot Topics. Um, World of Outlaw, NOS Energy Drink Sprint Cars. Um, Friday night, I-80 Speedway. The winner was David Gravel. Uh, David Gravel, Sheldon Hodenshield, Carson Macedo. This was David's first win as a dad. Yeah. I know. Levi. The baby came early. Yep. Which, which there was all kinds of hand-wringing. Yes. About National, National Open, Open Weekend. Reschedule. And rescheduling yep. and everything like that. And that's why when last Monday, I think it was, when David said it's showtime, I'm like, I'm just glad that it fit in yeah. baby and mom are happy and, and healthy. And you didn't miss a race. I, because it's you know. just a, it's a, I mean, I think, I, I think as an older guy now, I mean, it's like a no brainer. You would not miss that race mm-hmm. for the birth of your child. I don't know that 25 year old Steve Post would make that decision. It was same in a decision. points championship. It was in a points battle. championship. Yeah. Would make yeah. that same decision. And and this this is again, and I have huge huge respect for David Gravel, and I'm glad he didn't have to be faced with that situation. Mm-hmm. Um, I really am. I mean, it's just uh, and so he goes out to uh, I-80 in Nebraska, 76th World of Outlaw when the last when he won when he won one earlier we were 74 75 we were like that I'm like there, he, yeah that can't be right but it is uh, the cat can drive a race car. Um, the other story on this um, is that this is the final race at I-80 Speedway. Um, they had another race Saturday night, and then yep. they're shutting it down. Um, that and a whole lot of other places. World of Outlaws, 34 races at I-80, going back to May 5th, 1995. Mark Kinzer won the first one there. Um, so uh, we've lost another good one. So, folks, I know I remind you this frequently. Get out and support your local racetracks. Uh, Saturday night, Lakeside Speedway. Winner was James McFadden. McFadden, Geo Selzy, David Gravel. Uh, fifth win of the fifth career World of Outlaw win for uh, James, I think, uh, notably 99th World of Outlaw win for Dennis and Teresa Roth. Um, really good. Um, we've talked a lot about uh, uh, three weeks ago or four weeks ago, I thought the point battle was over, and I still think it certainly leads into the big cat's hand. Um, Gravel finished, uh, Gravel won, and Brad finished fifth on Friday night. Gravel finished third, and Brad finished fourth. <laughs> this is what we talked about. Yeah. You and I talked about this last year. Brad Sweet has got to be the most frustrating guy to run a points battle with. Yeah. Because he just won't go away. <laughs> I mean, you yeah. know, now, and, and which is what you're supposed to do. Uh, but that KKR team, they've got that thing buttoned in mm-hmm. really good. Um, one big hurdle this week at Williams Grove, but in July, David or uh, Brad won at Williams Grove. Yeah. So, does this? Tr- I, I think two years ago, 
it's like whoa, because gravel at that moment was just flying around that, that place. Grove, yeah. And Brad struggled there. I'm like, oh, this is now it's, a... it's mid sixties, fifty six points or something like that. Uh, but Brad seems to have closed that gap. But yeah. each race is its own entity. You can you can have a you can have a bad you can have a good night at Williams Grove oh, and have a horrible. bad finish. Yeah, yeah. Yes, exactly. Um, so World of Outlaws, uh, they've got Williams Grove, and then all dirt roads lead to Charlotte. Nark King of the West Series, Friday night, the Anthony Simone Memorial at Keller Auto Speedway. Now, Anthony was known as Mr. Excitement. 12 lead changes in the last 15 laps of that feature. That was bonkers. It really was bonkers. You're, and Rico's three wide pass through the middle with Sanders on the inside. That, that was impressive. Yeah, like, that, that was... was Pardon me while I set these two things on the dash and yeah. just go here. I mean, it's just that was... unreal. King of the West. King of the, they, were, they were like Friday, Friday night, Friday night, the race of the year and everything. And Saturday night says, well, hold my beer. <laughs> this yeah. is not going to be bad either. Uh, so Rico picked up the one on Friday night. That's his first King of the West start of 2022. Now we're going to talk to Rico in a little bit. Uh, Rico, Corey Day, Justin Sanders. Uh, Saturday night, the Dennis Roth Classic at Tulare, $8,300. Rico, his 17th NART King of the West win. Rico Dominic Selzy in the throwback Jeff Ventura, Todd Ventura car. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, Corey Day. Uh, so when you look at Saturday night, I think it's been pretty good for Dennis Roth. Yes. Uh, it was his tribute race uh, out there at Tulare. And over at Lakeside, uh, James McFadden brought that 83 car. It's 99th win. So neat stuff. Other winners. The Labor Day Classic was Friday night at Port Royal. I know it wasn't on all your calendars. Uh, no, they postponed it. They ran it Friday night with the Big Block Modifieds. Uh, Je uh, Justin Woodall picked up the win. His first Port Royal win. He's been close. Mm -hmm. He finished like third in the Tuscarora 50. He's been good. He has a win at Williams Grove last year, so it's not his first 410 win. Lincoln, the Knight of Champions. This is what we referenced. Danny Dietrich, 14th overall win of the season. Danny's been good with that cheater wing. Uh, 2022 <laughs> champ is the Freddie Raymer. Lernerville, the Steel City Stampede. Connor Morrell picked up the win. Benton, Missouri, a track that reopened this year. Uh, Joe B. Miller picked up the victory. So lots and lots of great racing action, that is for sure. And there you have it, our Hepner Racing Products hot top. Hepner Racing Products, easy to shop the entire line at Hepner Racing Products. It's hrpracing.com from desktop or right on your phone. And Aaron, they've got a deal. They've got a deal. They've got a deal. First time online orders use promo code MRN at checkout for 10% off your first order. Wow. You know, this time of year, getting mm -hmm. the shop put back together, getting your trailer getting put organized. back together, getting organized, go on there and then uh, type in MRN. And uh, man, yeah. you really can knock some bucks off from the deal there. So we appreciate everyone, our buddy Jeff Wessel and everyone up at Hefner Racing Products. We do need to step away when we come back. We will be joined by James McFadden, fresh off from that trip to Victory Lane Saturday night. Power isn't born, it's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Sage Fruit is a premium grower, packer, and shipper of Washington tree fruit. Apples, pears, and cherries, and it's always an exceptional eating experience, and they're grown in the beautiful Pacific Northwest. Not only is their produce healthy, but they are grown with such care and precision that you can count on each piece of fruit having exceptional flavor. High quality fruit, exceptional flavor, healthy snacking. Make sure when you go to your local grocery store, ask for Sage Fruit. Sage Fruit, it's our first choice for quick and easy snacking. Dirt Empire Magazine is the ultimate dirt track racing only magazine in the world. Featuring interviews, opinions, event photos, tech, and 100% racing action. Each issue includes late models, modified sprint cars, and more. Big event photos from the best photographers in the sport. And great one-on-one -on -one interviews with the top drivers as well as grassroots racers. Pick up a copy of Dirt Empire Magazine today at select tractor supply stores or other area retailers. Or get your subscription today at DirtEmpireMagazine.com. Welcome back. It is Wing Nation presented by Hercules Tires right on our strength. Let's go to the Sage Fruit Hotline. Joining us fresh off from a trip to Victory Lane at Lakeside Speedway in Kansas City, J-Max in the house. James McFadden. Hello, James. How are you? Hey, guys. Uh, really good. Um, thanks for having me on the show. 
no doubt about it. James, I think we saw this coming. Uh, lots and lots of great results. You've had four podium, or second place finish, 10 podiums this year, but man, that win was tough to get by. Had to be great to get that victory on Saturday night and finally check that one off for the season. Yeah, it was, uh, it's been a, a frustrating season to say the least. Uh, you know, you, you always think you're going to get one. Um, and then as, as the year's gone on, you know, there's been, you know, less and less races and we have what six left and I'm like, Oh, we, we've got, don't have a lot of opportunity here to get one so uh yeah to to get one and obviously finish a night off was was really good it was you know everyone in our team myself you know Dennis and Teresa and and all our guys that you know work so hard all all through the year it's it's hard when you've gone that far into a season and not win a race so to to obviously get it means a lot to, to everybody James, I saw a cool picture online of the whole gang at Tulare watching you from the Dennis Roth team with Dennis, um, watching you guys win this race. Talk a little bit about more about what it means to win for them. I mean, it's an iconic team to drive for. It's a they can be a, difficult owners at times because they expect wins. So, how nice was it to deliver that win for them on a special night for them? Yeah, obviously on the uh, on the Dennis Roth Classic night was was amazing. Um, probably couldn't have scripted it any better unless we sort of won it to Larry for an outlaw race or something so um yeah very special to do it on that night and then obviously the support from California during that race was was really cool so like I said they uh you know like every car in you you expect wins and and we expected wins you know a lot more than we we have so so to obviously do it on a night that celebrated Dennis was was great and um yeah like you said it it's tough it's tough not not winning a race this long into a season um obviously thankful that everyone stuck by us and believed in our team and and we were able to get them a, a win and sort of you know um yeah make it all worthwhile for them no doubt about that you mentioned the frustration and i think i mentioned the stats it's been like your performance has been good and i think back to skagit when you had that mechanical problem and you looked like it um, you, you do have to feel, was, was there going into that? Was there comfort at least that you had speed in the race car at a lot of times? Yeah, obviously that's probably the, the frustrating part. Um, we've had a lot of speed, but just not consistently yet throughout the night. You know, we've, we've been able to pass a lot of cars, um, but we start too deep or when we do, you know, put a night together and start up the front, we've, we've had, you know, things go wrong. Like I've made, you know, three or four times we've been up the front and I've, I've made mistakes and hit the fence or we've had a couple where the, the cut, some parts failed on the car and just little things. It just gets you to the point that everyone gets down. You know, you start questioning your driving, you start, the, the guys start questioning, you know, what they're doing wrong or it all just starts to, to compound. Um, you know, then you start blaming things like luck. And I think with the outlaw tour, you know, you need to be in a position 30 times to win a race and you're going to win 10. So, we just haven't been in the position to win as many races as we should have. And um, I feel like we're, you know, we're putting it all together these last sort of this month or so. And, you know, you keep making dashes and running top five, you're going to start winning races. James, you kind of hit on the next question I had for you about about keeping up your confidence when, when you're not getting those results that you want and keeping up the team's confidence and keeping your car owners happy how do you work through that and and even looking at that race on saturday night you know you ran third for a while and kind of kept your eye on things uh in that moment how do you keep that confidence like you know I, i'm going to do this i'm going to get by those two yeah obviously you, you've been in this position it's it's tough to keep your confidence when you keep getting uh you know driven down um this sport's very confidence-based, whether it's in your ability, whether it's in your, your team, your race cars, your equipment. Um, but it's tough to keep tough to keep it when you uh, when you seem to do everything wrong. Like there was a point in this year when, you know, I felt like I'd get a really good restart and then the yellow would come out. And, you know, you just, the next one I lose five spots. So it was just, it's hard to, it's, I think that's probably the biggest thing. I've raced a long time and, um, you know, I've never committed to series as like the world of outlaws. I don't think there's anything in the world like the world of outlaws. So, you know, you're there because of your ability, your ability, but the the hardest thing is keeping that ability for the 90 races. I think that's where you, you look at your Brad's and your Donnie's and the guys that have done it a long time. That's why they're successful because, you know, they believe in themselves. They're confident. 
but they've done it so long that they realize, you know, you're going to get 90 bad restarts for the year, but you've got to, you know, fight back um, as best you can. So, you know, the other night I had a bad start and, um, you know, I'm running around in third thinking, man, this is just deja vu for the last 90 races. I've, <laughs> I've got my spot myself in a spot and I'm not going to do it. And then found a line and got comfortable and got in a rhythm. And, you know, when your car operates like that and your mind's right, it's almost easy. It's easier to win a race than to, than to run 18th. So, yeah, I, I feel like I've been confident in the last couple months, um, you know, in a, in our car and, you know, like I said, you, you're here because you're, you have your ability. So, you know, when everything clicks, it, uh, it, uh, works really well. And it's, it's fun to, it's easy to have confidence when everything's clicking right. Mm -hmm. James, just before we come on the air, I'd ask you, are you in North Carolina? You said you were in Indy and, and that leads me to a question. Um, last year, the Roth team to some degree aligned with KKR. Um, is there still kind of an alliance there with KKR? Or how does that work? Or are they pretty much two independent teams the way they were a couple of years ago? Yeah, they're, they're two uh, individual teams. Obviously, the cars were built um, in Mooresville over the winter uh, with the team. My team was, was based um, in, in Mooresville. But uh, the, the race shop's here in, in Indy um, and obviously the race shop in California. So... We just bounce between those two places. Still have a, a great relationship with with Casey and KKR and and everyone involved, but it's definitely a uh, you know the Roth Motorsport um, under their banner. It's uh, yeah yeah like uh, my cars are the same as Casey's are, um, but obviously then we've got you know Speedway engines and some different stuff. So yeah, sort of aligned, but not. Not really, if that makes any sense. <laughs> yeah, no, that no, that does. I mean, I know there's a lot of tentacles and a lot of different things, so it's just kind of one of those things. I was, I was curious as to where that was at, how that factored in. So, James, yeah, I got to like my, my, oh, sorry, no, go ahead. Sorry, yeah, like my visas and stuff are still with um, KKR, so yeah, I'm still, yeah, essentially a part of of Casey's organization in that aspect, but everything else is 100 percent um, yeah. Roth for sure. Cool. Well, going back to Saturday night, I have to ask about the shoey. I got a lot of questions about the shoey. So I didn't really know this tradition and don't, I'm sorry, I, I wasn't aware of it, but I thought it was kind of interesting, but also a little disgusting. Um, what, did, where did yeah. this tradition come from and, and how um, nasty did the beer actually taste? Well, it was a Bud Light, so it's nasty anyway. I don't think you can make it any worse. I said the same thing to Aaron. I said the, the same. same thing to Aaron. And I know you're. I know you're a connoisseur of, uh, of 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 different beers too. So, okay, we're on the same page there. Now, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's just a bubbly water, to be honest. But anyway, we uh, there was a there was an Australian guy. Um, he actually races sprint cars um, in Australia. Um, the Sprint Pig. That's what he calls himself. Um, but we, uh, he was there at the races, and he had two beers in his pocket before the A and said, if you win, we're doing a shoey. And I was like, yeah, whatever, whatever. Like, I've never done one. Um, so, yeah, then we won, and he was the first person there to hand me a beer. So I thought, well, <laughs> got to do it now. I said I would. So we, we did it, and it's, it's not as bad as what you'd probably think. But, <laughs> yeah, there's, it's sort of an Australian thing. Um, you know, Daniel Ricciardo, the Formula 1 driver, does it. Uh, the David Reynolds, the guy who won Bathurst, which is our biggest, you know, asphalt touring car race. He did it when he won. Uh, the MotoGP guys do it. Um, I think there was a, you know, an MMA fighter did it the other day. So um, it's just a weird Australian thing, you know, what Australians <laughs> are like. We're, we're a little different anyway. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I'd never done it and thought it'd be pretty funny. So it's, it's actually got some good good reaction so I'm, I'm happy i did it yeah yeah but you're if you're dumping a good craft beer in that shoe i'm coming after you then you know what i mean it's like yeah, uh, yeah. we're not gonna do that yeah that's, that's funny yeah and it's pretty hard to get it all in to be honest like, if you look at some of those photos there's a lot more in the beard and and down the suit than in the mouth so i did notice that that. Yeah. Good thing. that might be a good thing right there yeah some It'll pretty horrible up. photos <laughs> gosh that was awesome it was really really cool james fun stuff for sure um are you headed back uh to your to your native land are you headed back after the season's over and uh you had shared with me a couple of years ago up at kkr your engine building business over there and how that all worked are you headed back do you have stuff lined up during the off season yeah, we're going to go back after after the World Finals. Um, 
it's going to be a lot different. I, I sold my house and, and everything in Australia. So we're sort of going to be a little homeless there, float between the, the our parents and, um, yeah, it's going to be a little different. But it's going to be great. Mav's got some younger cousins the same age as him and, um, you know, it's going to be a fun a fun sort of sort of three months, I'd say, at home. I'm going to race, but a very, very limited schedule. Uh, last year I raced and it, it, uh, it sort of took, you know, took away the fun of racing. I was, it was almost a, a chore to go race at home when, you know, when you're home with family and sort of need a bit of a vacation. It was the first time in my life that I'd ever, ever been like, man, I, I sort of don't want to go to the races. I'd rather sit in the garden and, you know, cut my edges and stuff at my house. So, um, yeah, we, uh, we're going to do a little bit, but, uh, not a lot of racing, probably five or six races will be, will be it. Um, and then, not really doing any engine stuff anymore. Shut that side of things down. I'll still help those guys that have my engines um, if they need it. But uh, yeah, with with the schedule being so busy as it is the last couple of years, it's sort of all my attention's turned to being over here and um, can't sort of have a little bit of a normal life at home. <laughs> nice. Well, that family time, that quality time, that's going to be really, really nice for you. You guys, I don't know how you grind up and down the roads like you do. It's uh, it's impressive yeah. for sure. Yeah, it's tough. It's um, you know, and for us, we don't have a house over here, so you know, we live in the motorhome for the whole time, and you know, it'd be nice to to be able to have a house and stuff over here. But the way we're doing it, it's nice to be able to go home. Home's a vacation for us, so really looking forward to that. Nice, nice. Be nice to get another win or two before they'll get Dennis and Teresa to that number one hundred win. That'd be really cool if you can do that here before we get done and. Maybe that'll happen and send you on your way back to your native land uh, with, uh, with a couple here at the end of the year. Well, James, it is always a pleasure to chat with you. We love that you uh, finally got to Victory Lane there on Saturday night, and we appreciate your time here today. No, anytime, guys. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. There we go. J-Mac, James McFadden joining us here on the Sage Fruit Hotline. Stay with us. Rico Abreu is next. Sage Fruit is a premium grower, packer, and shipper of Washington tree fruit. Apples, pears, and cherries, and it's always an exceptional eating experience, and they're grown in the beautiful Pacific Northwest. Not only is their produce healthy, but they are grown with such care and precision that you can count on each piece of fruit having exceptional flavor. High quality fruit, exceptional flavor, healthy snacking. Make sure when you go to your local grocery store, ask for Sage Fruit. Sage Fruit, it's our first choice for quick and easy snacking. Power isn't born, it's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Just like racing components, Aggressive Hydraulics purpose builds hydraulic cylinders to perform for customer specific applications. They design and manufacture mobile style single stage cylinders as well as multi stage telescopic cylinders. It's a no one size fits all approach with Aggressive Hydraulics. Hydraulic solutions for virtually every industry that uses hydraulic cylinders. They proudly design and manufacture all cylinders in the United States. Check out the video of their story at aggressivehydraulics.com. Just like racing components, Aggressive Hydraulics purpose builds hydraulic cylinders to perform for customer specific applications. They design and manufacture mobile style single stage cylinders as well as multi stage telescopic cylinders. It's a no one size fits all approach with Aggressive Hydraulics. Hydraulic solutions for virtually every industry that uses hydraulic cylinders. They proudly design and manufacture all cylinders in the United States. Check out the video of their story at AggressiveHydraulics.com. Just like racing. Welcome back. It is Wing Nation presented by Hercules Tires. Let's go back to the Sage Fruit High Line. Joining us is Rico Abreu. Hello, Rico. How are you? Hi, guys. Thanks for having me on. Okay. We just had James McFadden. The question I want to know is Have you ever done a shoey? <laughs> I, I seen that in his picture, and I never have. Um, that's, it takes a real professional to do something like that. I, I don't know if I could do it. Uh, we're, we're Aaron and I. Aaron, Aaron, 
Erin just. I have her, a lot of questions. She has a lot of questions and about so it. So now my question is: If you win trophy cup, will you do one? I, I, I'll, <laughs> I, I'll try. Oh I'll, gosh! I'll have to remember, I'll try. <laughs> oh, he had shared I'm the story. Scared, I'm not scared to try to do anything, so I might as well. Well, no, try. and that's what I figure. You're, uh, yeah. you're, you're, you're not, you're not scared of a little bit of a uh, little bit of that stuff. So. Um, Re, uh, and and, and uh, yeah, he had shared. It was a buddy of his that came over and asked him before the race, and it ended up. Well, I guess I got to do it. I told him I would when I if, if we won the yeah, race. That's awesome. Yeah, it, I, I love the story of it. I really do. I'm not sure about doing it, but I love the story of it, and I'm glad James picked I up the win. I feel like you could be persuaded to do. Oh that. yeah, probably at uh, <laughs> in your next five k turn, turn three. Yeah, turn three at Knoxville or Dingus. They probably could talk me into a shoey. Yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> Um, I don't know. Who knows? It's crazy. It really is. That's going to um, be my plan for the Nationals next year. That's it. Maybe we'll do that for talk the Nationals. You in, talk you into a shoey. I'll do it with you. <laughs> okay, that's it. We'll do that. Yeah, absolutely. We'll do that. There I, we go. I, I'll, I'll video it. Oh, boy. Yeah, no, yeah. you got to be part of <laughs> no, this. No, you got to be part of this. Come on. Come on, girl. <laughs> Uh, Rico, I'll tell you what, uh, Colorado Speedway, Peter Murphy's place, and then to Larry, uh, looks like you had that car rolling pretty good all weekend. Yeah, they, uh, you know, we've, we've been hitting on things throughout the year. We've been going through spurts where a couple of weeks we'll be, we'll have some, um, you know, significant amount of speed and then we'll get off a little bit. And I feel like we've, um, kind of backtracked to some things earlier this year that we've had speed with. And I think it's all just part of, uh, you know, racing with Ricky and Ricky's ex- experience and knowledge to racing and just not leaving things on the table right that he's you know he's raced with don for so many years and and things that worked with donnie didn't really don't really work as well with me so we kind of can get off track really easy and then um you know and then get back to things we know we just don't want to leave anything out when it comes to um a playbook for our team so um you know it's it's been really consistent the last few weeks and that's what, you know, we've been working for this year. And, um, you know, I knew through the start of the year, it was going to be, um, you know, a huge learning curve for both of us. And I feel like this is, um, you know, right into our wheelhouse, these, these tracks we've been going to the last few weeks. And as you can see, the results have, have been quite, uh, consistent. Absolutely. Rico, you've worked with a, a number of different crew chiefs, well, you hit on it a little bit, but what is it like working with, with Ricky? He's had so much success with Donnie, like you mentioned, but he's a thinker. He's an engineer. I, I know him a little bit from the NASCAR side when he worked for Ray. Um, just always, you know, tinkering on the car and, and always constantly trying always. to get it better. What is What has it been like to work with him and to learn from him? Um, you know, my biggest my biggest thing with Ricky and, and the, the crew chiefs that I've worked with over the years is, um, you know, he never makes me feel like belittled or anything, or he never allows me to feel like I'm the problem or I'm the mistake. And, um, yes, I've made mistakes, through, you know, throughout the year this year that's cost us, you know, good finishes. And, um, you know, and I'm w- well aware of those, of that, of those circumstances, but, um, you know, and, and a lot of it is his knowledge and his input to racing, um, you know, and he's, he's very, um, you know, he just, he, he puts a lot of focus into it and it's all he's thinking about and it's all he's worried about. And, um, uh, you know, and, and he has a, a great communication skill to the driver. I feel that it allows me to, um, feel uplifted when I'm racing and, and confident that my car is going to be fast. Um, you know, and, and our car could be, um, off a little bit, but I still have that confidence in my team and he's really pushed me to that level. Um, which, which even on our, our off nights where we finished 12th to fifth or, you know, 15th to, you know, 16th in that area, we still make sure to collect data and learn from, that result and why we were in that position. So that's, that's been the biggest change for me and, and my team. And, um, and I feel like that's what I've invested in the most with Ricky is, is turning those off nights into, um, you know, that data, why we had a poor result into information and, 
um, you know, and trying to minimize those, those nights. We watched on Flow Racing those races this weekend, watched the highlights of them, and you mentioned driver confidence, and, and mm-hmm. they, they both were just brawls. I mean, they were just phenomenal. They were, they were I mean, that, that Friday night race, oh, my gosh. <laughs> I mean, I'm literally, I, I'm, I, I was crazy and that sort of thing. To me, driver confidence in a battle like that has got to be so critical. That had to serve you well to put that car in some of the places you were putting it. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was, and I knew, um, you know, throughout the night we worked on a car, we made changes on it, uh, and, you know, we got an extra, some extra time on the track with the trophy dash, and I knew um, we were going to be really, really close, um, especially at Hanford, and, you know, I knew Corey Day was going to be coming, I knew Dominic was going to be the car to beat, um, you know, with Corey's success this year started in 15th i knew he was going to be in the mix at the end of the race um you know those races are 30 laps so they can go quick um and it and takes a lot of discipline to be patient at the end of them especially when you're getting pressured um you know and i just tried to really think through um that race especially uh you know racing with dom and he was a little bit faster in the beginning of the race and um i knew we could get to lap traffic i can maneuver sometimes it it's really, really easy to get impatient when you catch traffic and um, especially guys are, you know, running in your line. So you, it forces you to start searching and that allowed me to, um, you know, being in second place is a little bit easier than leading, uh, you know, as we've all seen throughout the years. So it was, I just thought overall, um, you know, for the fan aspect of it, they got their money's worth on Friday and Saturday. I mean, there was two extremely special events um you know one for anthony simone friday night and then the dennis roth classic saturday was um you know that race obviously didn't disappoint either rico how important is it for you or what does it feel like to win such special races in california i mean obviously to win at eldora with the world of outlaws and win with the all-stars are are great accomplishments but being from california winning a race like that at tulare those have to be special wins too yeah they are um you know those those fans that come to those races, they, they seen me race my first ever race back in Mm -hmm. 2011. So they, um, you know, are well aware of my career path and, um, my dedication to sprint car racing. And, and I know that because of the interaction I have with the fans after the races and the comments they say about, um, you know, how much they enjoy getting to see us drivers come back to California and race and, um, you know, and, and they know how special it is, um, to, to see those kinds of races. I mean, that's, that's all they, you know, they talk about is, is when we come back and race and the Kyle Larson's and the Brad Sweets and, um, you know, those are the people that, those are the drivers that they follow, um, outside of, you know, their, their fan favorite drivers in California. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's always a special place in my heart to come home and race and um, especially such prestige events like, um, like they've created Peter's created at Hanford and the free as have created at Tulare, um, you know, and those are two tracks that I grew up racing. Um, and I have much respect for, um, you know, a lot of success at Tulare on my, uh, for, in my career. And it's, um, you know, it's a place I've, I've, had success there with no matter who's worked on my car and and it's um you know it reminds me of some tracks in pennsylvania like lincoln and wayne county and kind of the same style of racing so i've always you know seemed to do well at those tracks and it's just i just enjoy it i enjoy the hell out of it yeah yeah no it's really really neat speaking of two larry uh gearing up for the trophy cup there the uh, this coming weekend um, what's, what the trophy cup to me is, is probably the number one race on my bucket list. I've got to get those NASCAR people to schedule things properly <laughs> so I can get out there sometime. But as a racer getting ready to go, the format of this, the charity of this, the event of this, what's your, uh, what's your geeked up level when you get ready to go to the trophy cup this week? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's the, it's the, one of the bigger crown jewels in California. Um, you know, and it's, it it has a good purse. It you know it's for a great cause of Make a Wish, and I know Dave and his family and all the hard work they do putting into that event, and Steve Faria putting in um, you know what they do 
you know, during the races, the auctions they put on, the money they raise um, after the races, the the events they put on. I mean, I I think they do a taco night, a chili night, and um, high five pizzas catering this year one night. So it's uh, you know, and and they do just don't they donate all their time. So it's um, that's what it's all about. And and it the format there they've created is. Um, based off passing points and the, the fast cars start in the back and they got to go to the front and the cream rises to the top. Um, you know, and, and that's how it's put on such great races every year. And, um, you know, a couple of years ago, I was fortunate enough to win all three of the feature events and, and the points championship, which I don't think any that's ever been done there. Um, so it was a pretty special, uh, you know, win for me for, you know, not only, it being for make a wish, but um, you know, you're racing in front of a pack house on Saturday night and they invert the whole field and you got to win from the back. Yeah. I love the format and I love how much they do for, for make a wish Rico. I saw that your dad celebrated a birthday last weekend uh, or last week. It must've been a nice present to give him two wins this weekend. Yeah. He, uh, you know, it's always fun to come home and race and, you know, get to see everybody. I, I left in, uh, this year I left, I feel like I leave earlier and earlier from California every year. And I left in, uh, the end of March and I didn't come home till last, uh, last Thursday. So it was, uh, it was a long, long stint for me to be gone from our home here in California. And it's, uh, you know, it just makes you traveling throughout the country. makes you appreciate the little things at home. It's, uh, you know, we're all getting older here. So it's, it's, um, you know, I just, my appreciation aspect gets higher and higher every year. I, I, I agree with you. I, I totally agree with you. It's, uh, we live dream lives and there are times when just getting home and doing the simple things are, are part of the dream. That's for mm-hmm. sure. It's some of the best parts. Uh, Rico, so much fun to watch you race that car, and uh, congratulations on the success. Uh, we'll catch up with you here in a few weeks when you come to town for Charlotte, but uh, we wish you the best this week at the Trophy Cup. Thanks for joining us here on Wing Nation. Thank you, guys. Thank there, you, guys. There we go. Rico Abreu joining us here on Winged Nation. A lot of wisdom there from Rico. Mm-hmm. A lot of wisdom about that. Um, he said, I mean, and, and he's got a little bit more. He's 30 years old. We're all getting older. He's 30 years old. It's fine if Rico wants to drop that on us, but when Gio Selzy dropped it on <laughs> Ashley and I out of Knoxville, come on, dude, you don't even need to don't even yeah. start with this. Yeah, babies. Yeah, yeah. Gio, now Gio can't drop that one. Rico's getting to the age where he can drop that yeah. one a little bit. There you have it. Stay with us. We've got more Wing Nation in just a moment. Power isn't born. It's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Circle B Diecast is the new Diecast outlet from Plan B Sales. What started as a Lionel and Chase Authentics apparel distributor has grown into the largest distributor of Diecast and now includes Auto World, Greenlight Collectibles, Brand Art, Sam Bass Artwork, and University of Racing Lines. They have a huge inventory. The folks at Circle B Diecast love racing and they support drivers like Kyle Larson, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Christopher Bell, and many others with sponsorships and partnerships. On orders of $20 or more, use promo code MRN for free shipping. You can check them out at www.circlebdiecast.com. Flow Racing is the ultimate digital home track for race fans everywhere. Subscribe today and stream over 1,300 racing events live and on demand. Flow Racing is something for everyone. Well, we know sprint cars are there. NASCAR weekly racing series, drag racing, off-road, and much, much more. Learn more at flowracing.com forward slash go MRN. That's flowracing.com forward slash go MRN. Wing Nation. Presented by Hercules Tires, right on our strength. Really love the guest, James McFadden and Rico Abra on the Sage Fruit Hotline. Just two yeah. just stalwarts, just absolute rocks mm-hmm. in our sport. Just just could not be stand-up guys, great racers, 
great stories, uh, great passion for it. And yet the irony of it all is both of them love getting home. Yeah. James can't wait to get well, down to Australia and Rico's savoring some time out in California. Absolutely. And I, you know, the, the neat thing about what you just said is I feel like we almost say that every week when we get off with our guests, like how many just good people are in our sport? Good drivers, you, right you know, like the, the, they're great drivers, but they're great people too. You're so right about that. We, we get say down, it like, it's like every it's week. It's like every week we get down there, man, I like him. Man, that's yeah. a good guy. Man, you, I could drink a beer with that I mean, guy. there's really that's never like, a time, well, not that we'd say it on air or anything, but yeah. you would say like, man, what a phony. It, yeah, it's just no, not really in our sport. we never have that at yeah. all. And so it's just repeating itself time and time again. Yeah, but it's a and, good thing. <laughs> but it's a good thing. It really is. That's for sure. So another good thing is the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum. It is at one sprint car place in Knoxville, Iowa. Right, turn number two of the Knoxville Raceway on the famed Marion County Fairgrounds. We do a, a birthday calendar. Gil Sonner, birthday would have been yesterday. John Ambler, Floyd Trevis, Gordon Woolley, Ted Heldebrand, Gaylord White, and Dave Argerbright coming up as far as the birthdays go. Okay? Um, today would have been the birthday of Charles Dutch Bauman a 2013 inductee into the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame. Dutch was born in 1897. He worked on a farm, then he opened his own machine shop, and in 1922, he got the bug and went racing. And he had some moderate success. 1927, uh, qualified for the Indy 500, led wow. nine laps, uh, DNF. But in 20, or 1928, he teamed with Arthur Chevrolet. Not a bad person to team with, I would think. They raced 52 times that year, and he won 43 of them. Wow. All across the Midwest. <laughs> That's a pretty good percentage. Continued having success until 1930, when he passed away after injuries at Kankakee, Illinois. Wow. The, 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 the life cut way, way, way short. short. 33 years. What a great story. What great success. And his life cut short is still forever enshrined at the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame. That is why the National, it, it, is, it is wonderful that we get our current stars into the Hall of Fame so that they can savor and enjoy. Mm -hmm. I, I, I go back to a conversation I had with Fred Raymer, and we know Fred is rough and tumble as anybody in the world, and he said getting involved, getting a shrine there took his breath away. He said, and it's a pretty yeah. cool thing. And I've talked to Danny Smith and Lance DeWeese and Donnie Kreitz and people like that about it. Um, just amazing. Even what it meant to Tony Stewart. What it meant to Tony you know, Stewart, like exactly. Someone yeah. who's in a, a number of Hall of Fame. Yeah, absolutely. He what said it was Tony like Stewart. his greatest accomplishment. Greatest accomplishment, exactly. And so, and it's a great accomplishment for guys like that, but it's also great for people that, that we never knew, mm -hmm. we never watched race, like Dutch Bowman. So um, support the Sprint Car Hall of Fame. You can do it. One way of doing it is their 14th annual Sprint Car Raffle, Aaron. They've, they've, got, they've got you hooked up with a Sprint Car here. They do. It's a triple X chassis and Moyo Racing engine. Tickets are $20 each or 6 for $100. The drawing is December 16th. So coming up, go to www.sprintcarraffle.com for more information. There you go. And if you just want to get involved in general with the museum, $25, you can become a, a supporter of the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum. You can find out more there at SprintCarHOF.com, SprintCarHOF.com. All right. This weekend, uh, we had one biggie. Now we have two biggies. Trophy Cup. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna be on the East Coast and the West Coast. Uh, let's talk a little bit about, first off, the 60th running of the Champion Racing Oil Williams Grove National Open. Postponed from earlier this month, Aaron, they're paying $75,000 to win the 40 lap feature. They sure are. That is crazy. The first, this, this fascinates me. I did a little bit on the history uh, of this race and, and going back. The first one of these races, uh, National <laughs> Opens, was in 1963. Gordon Johncock, who would later become a two-time Indy winner, mm -hmm. he showed up, and he had something fancy on the top of the car, like a foil or a wing or something. Like on a Danny the Danny Dietrich wing. Maybe that was the Danny Dietrich <laughs> wing. That's why Dietrich is doing it, yeah. Remember, that was back before we had wings on sprint cars. Yep. And John Cox showed up and had a uh, Danny Dietrich cheater wing on the car. <laughs> and uh, maybe that, uh... see, Danny, before Danny's time even. Um, but had a wing on the car. Last year was Carson Macedo. When we look at the National Open, Donnie Schatz, a six-time winner of it. Steve Kinzer, Lance DeWeese, Kenny Weld, four times they've won it. Uh, Doug Wolfgang, Stevie Smith, and Steve Smith are all three-time winners. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's a pretty impressive list right there. 
of racers that have won that race. Yeah. Um, and it's been really fun lately because we've had Danny's won it, Brent Marks has won it, David Gravel mm -hmm. has won it. I know I'm going to miss folks. Um, but we've had a really, it's been a real roundtable rotation of drivers winning it. Yep. Which is good because it's, you know, it's, it's, it becomes one of your marquee wins. Mm -hmm. You know, and so we'll see what happens this Saturday. One day show for this thing. Fun stuff. Not a one day show is the Abreu Vineyards 28th Annual Trophy Cup at Tulare. Okay. Highest paid 360 race in the world. The winner will get a minimum of $28,000. Okay. The unique format, it is all passing points. You go out, you run a race, you pass everybody on the planet. If you've done the best job of everybody, you start last and mm -hmm. you do it again. And you keep doing that and keep doing that. The stakes get higher. The races get longer. The stakes get higher. Yep. And then you go in a 50-lap race on uh, Saturday night. Okay? We talked about $28,000 to win. Okay? Let's say Rico goes out there and sets himself in the number one spot. Let's say he's the number one, which means on Friday night he starts Sorry. 20th. Yep. Okay? If the driver who starts 20th wins... They're guaranteeing a minimum purse of fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, no doubt about it. And there's more money if you are. It's the top four. So if you start nineteenth, I forget what it is. Eighteenth, mm -hmm. seventeenth. There's bonus money for those top four drivers. So uh, fascinating stuff. It really is. Defending winner is Buddy Kofoid, and oh yes, a hundred and eleven entries. Oof. Man, love it. I love it too. That is, uh, this is, um, I, I've created, I've working on an off season project of creating my, um, uh, and my bucket list of events. I, I've, I did really well, like the last five years, checking a bunch of them off. You know, Knoxville was a few years back, but Chili Bowl the last couple of years, Snowball Derby, I got to do it. I'm not overall racing. Um, Trophy Cup is moved to the number one spot. Um, but we just got to get everyone to cooperate. Yeah. We've got to get, uh, We've got to get the, 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 a PRN track to race that weekend um, <laughs> from the NASCAR side. But um, so, and, and the thing of it is, is we talked all about this great racing, Aaron, and the great racing is secondary. Yeah. Because it's all a fundraiser for Make-A-Wish. And the year to date, or the total they have raised for Make-A-Wish with this race is $2.25 million. That's incredible. Make-A-Wish. And you know, you've been involved with Make-A-Wish. Yep. I've, I've been involved with it as well. So good. Thursday night, they have a barbecue. Friday night, they have a taco fiesta. Uh, taco fiesta. Saturday's the spaghetti feed. Rico's right. They're making pizzas one night. They're doing the pizza This thing. is why it's on the bucket this list. Is why I mean, the, the racing is a good deal, too. But I see that the, the whole... Well, I'll tell you what. I went out there for the Cating Classic, and they eat really good there, too. <laughs> Not like this. And I'm just like, I, I like California. I mean, because first off, it's cowboy up bull ring yes. racing. Okay? Yeah. And the characters out there, mm -hmm. the people out there are just wonderful. I, I just, I, I love the people out there. And then when I did the Cating Classic, it was like they get done racing and then they eat and drink beer. Yeah. Formally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they get up and then they eat and then they race and then they eat and drink beer again. And this is all it is. You're kind of living right you're there. You're kind of living right there. Eating, drinking beer and sprint cars on a cowboy up racetrack. <laughs> That is cha-ching right there. Yeah, I'm so, not sure who wouldn't like that, actually. Well, that's true. Yeah, you're <laughs> looking at me. You're over there looking at me. You wish you could do it, too. Yeah. Um, so fun stuff. Uh, Trophy Cup this weekend. And, um, man, I'll tell you what, we'll be following along. Love love what uh, Dave Pusateri and everyone does out there. I think that is awesome. Uh, a couple other races, though, this week. Four tens. Baps Motor Speed. Well, you know Pennsylvania, when they have an open night, they try to fill them in. So Saturday night's the National Open. Baps is going to slide into Friday night and run a 410 show. Saturday night, Ohio uh, Atomic Speedway, Ohio Valley Speedway in West Virginia, and Jacksonville, Illinois have races as well. So we are getting down there. It's just yeah. not nearly what it used to be. <laughs> uh, some great uh, 360 racing. Um, Patriots are at Dundee for the Dutch Hogue Classic, which I love that one too. I watched Dutch Hogue race asphalt modifieds mm -hmm. at Shangri-La as a child. So. Uh, fun stuff. So lots of neat stuff for sure. So uh, we talked about this a little bit at the top of the show. Get out and support your local racetrack. Get out and go to a race. Uh, if they're coming to your area or anybody's coming to your area, go. Um, it's fun stuff. It really, truly is. So we do appreciate James McFadden joining us, and we do appreciate Rico Abreu joining us. But more important than all of that, we thank you for joining us here on Wing Nation, presented by Hercules Tires, right on our strength.